In 2008, Apple announced the App Store. This specific launch led to a flood of new applications of a whole new ecosystem for developers and users, and it led the iPhone to new heights. What already was a great tool for limited amounts of use cases suddenly became the digital Swiss army knife in your pocket, being able to perform countless tasks for you and expanding in functionality every single day. OpenAI just announced a new feature to ChatGPT called Plugins, and it's honestly exactly that. It's OpenAI's App Store moment. I have no doubt that it will turn ChatGPT, which is already useful, into one of the most powerful toolkits you could ever get your hands on. You're a developer and you've just spent two weeks or maybe a little bit longer writing this amazing app. And what is your dream? Your dream is to get it in front of every iPhone user and hopefully they love it and buy it, right? That's not possible today. Developers don't, most developers don't have those kinds of resources. Even the big developers would have a hard time getting their app in front of every iPhone user. Well, we're going to solve that problem for every developer, big to small. And the way we're going to do it is what we call the App Store. This analogy actually works incredibly well for what OpenAI has just announced. So far, you could build on top of their APIs to create your own applications. Some of these applications are wrappers that put the functionality of ChatGPT in a different user interface. Others take part of the features and embed them into new context. I even built my own little project on a single weekend that allows you to turn voice notes into website designs and actual HTML. You can try it out for free if you like. The problem with all of this is that these types of apps don't really feel native. And they're also very hard to distribute. The OpenAI plugins feature will solve this issue and make ChatGPT, as well as applications that build on top of it, extremely user-friendly and accessible. In this video, I want to give you an overview of what's possible with this newest edition. We will start with the web browsing plugin, then look at the absolutely insane new code interpreting, and then cover the third-party plugin workflow, which is the App Store, basically. Be careful, it might blow your mind. Let's get right in. Two of the major drawbacks of ChatGPT that are also somewhat connected to each other are, for once, that the knowledge cutoff is at the end of 2021, meaning it can't provide information for current events, and secondly, that it regularly just makes stuff up. The browsing plugin, which is in alpha stage and not publicly available yet, solves, or at least partly solves, these downsides. As you can see in this example, the plugin makes it possible for ChatGPT to search the web for your queries. It uses the Bing API to do so. What's great is that it gives you the sources that led to its answer, so you can easily verify them. It's also smart enough to understand in which cases it already knows the answer and in which cases it needs to search the internet. I believe this has wide applications and honestly could change the way you browse the internet altogether. What's even more impressive to me is the new code interpreter. I believe this plugin will quickly turn into one of the most popular no-code tools ever. It lets you perform tasks that you would write down in Python scripts, but instead of Python, you just use natural language. In their presentation, OpenAI gave lots of great examples for this specific plugin, and I want to show you my two favorite ones that I will definitely use myself once I can. First of all is interpreting table files like a .csv. It reads what's in the file that you uploaded and you can interact with the contents, ask for visualizations, query what you want to be shown or how the data should be manipulated, all without a single line of code or complicated formula you would need to type in an Excel cell. I definitely need to do this regularly, but I'm not great at Excel or Google Sheets, so this will help a ton to understand the data of a file quickly. I think OpenAI itself gives a great description of why this code interpreter is such a big deal. Having access to a very eager junior programmer working at the speed of your fingertips can make completely new workflows effortless and efficient, as well as open the benefits of programming to new audiences. I completely agree. Here's a second example. If you do video content like me or are in the VFX or CG industry, you might know FFmpeg. It's a command line tool that lets you do all sorts of things to audio and video files, like change the format from MOV to MP4, cut out a specific part of the video, change resolutions, bitrate and frame rate, all with a single command. The problem, once again, is that you need to learn and understand these commands. This is where ChatGPT wins, because the code interpreter understands your natural language. You can upload your video file and simply ask it to perform the desired action using basic English. 
I hope it's easy to see for you how this can be game-changing. These are just two examples, but this works for so many different things. While this is awesome in my eyes, it also carries some risks. We execute code in a secured environment and use strict network controls to prevent external internet access from executed code. Disabling internet access limits the functionality of our code sandbox, but we believe it's the right initial trade-off. And I think this is a good choice. Additionally, there is also the open source retrieval plugin, which lets you create personal assistance based on your own data. This is such a strong use case that I will cover it separately in my next video. I believe it marks the turning point from personal computers to personal assistants or personal AI assistants. The metamorphosis from computation to communication, where instead of technical knowledge to operate tools, you now only need your natural language. I believe it could very well be the defining technology of the 2020s. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss that video. But let's look at the third-party plugins, the App Store, so to speak. When starting a conversation on chat.openai.com, users can choose which third-party plugins they'd like to enable. The access to this will roll out over time through a waitlist for users and developers. So far, there are 11 plugins integrated, including Zapier, Expedia and Wolfram. I think the best way to showcase what these third-party plugins really mean or what their capabilities are is to give you an example. Today I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT to do some simple meal planning. First, let's head to the plugin store to install the necessary plugins. Next, let's ask ChatGPT for a restaurant recommendation on Saturday, a recipe for Sunday, the total calorie count, and to order the ingredients on Instacart. First, it's using OpenTable to find me a great restaurant for Saturday. For Sunday, it's finding me a simple recipe, and it's asking Wolfram Alpha to calculate the calories. 862, great. Now let's make the shopping list. All right, all we have to do to order the ingredients is click the link. Now imagine that instead of 11 integrations, you have thousands of integrations available that can talk to each other. So what can we take away from this? There have been many key user interface breakthroughs in computing, from the graphical user interface of PCs to the web browser to smartphone apps with multi-touch. I believe that ChatGPT, with the countless of plugins that will arrive, will be a new breakthrough in user interfaces and might replace the classical web browser altogether, or at least challenge how we use web browsers and smartphone apps in the future. It's that big of a deal. On top of that, OpenAI is very quickly growing into one of the most powerful tech companies in the world. This is actually scary. Check out this video to understand why.